You don't know everything about me. The Avengers weren't my first family. At some point, we all have to choose. A, B, N. It's headphones, Neil! What's up guys, Headphones Neil here, back with my review for, back with a film review, and in this case it's going to be the 2021 film Black Widow. So I'll start right off the bat and say that if you have not seen the film and don't want to be spoiled, then definitely watch the film first, as I'm not going to overtly go out and spoil specific elements in the film, but I will talk about some of the stuff that happened, some of the events, and especially the um, post credit scene. So going into it, I will also say that there's only one credit scene at the very end. There's nothing in the mid credits or anything like that. So uh, just a bit of heads up there. Um, so as far as, or so with that out of the way, as far as the film goes, I want to say that the film was okay just because it not and I don't want to say because it was released in COVID or after COVID or because of the delays and all of that but the film feels like it worked better as a release directly after Avengers Endgame came out so for me there's one main fix and I'll get to that um, after I talk about the film a little bit because it's related to the post credit scene and Falcon and the Winter Soldier but as far as the film itself goes the it was okay as far as what they were um, doing it was a lot of stuff related to family and um, notably Black Widow's family how she grew up and how her life or how her life was alive because she was set up in a family that wasn't with parents that were not her own um, the guy who sent her to the training program killed her um, parents because they were too inquisitive and things like that so all of that worked well to give us a little bit of backstory and set up the tension between um, Scarlett Johansson and the main villain because we now learn in this film what happened in Budapest and how they remember things how she remembered things very differently from Hawkeye in that she killed um, the main villain's daughter which was supposed to be a lot more of attention but then it also didn't really feel like too much of attention because it wasn't really talked about too much they talked about finding him but then the daughter thing wasn't too big of a deal they did not spend too much time um on the daughter they, was, they spent a lot of time as far as budapest goes telling us about it rather than really showing us anything about it there was very little setup they didn't bring in hawkeye which i think would have made it a lot better so um i think among the what we got in the film i think that would have made the movie a lot better by having um, Clint in the movie but by not having him there's one other way they could have fixed the film in my opinion especially because of um, all the stuff related to COVID but for me that was the biggest problem in the film is that they didn't spend enough time talking or showing us the whole Budapest mi mission they told us about how Natasha escaped which we didn't see they showed us the setup as far as her blowing up the building with the bad guy's daughter in it, assuming he was also in the building but i guess he wasn't and the search for the red room which apparently was a more steampunk retro version of the um, shield helicarrier which i thought was a cool effect and they, they did very well but in general it just felt like there was a lot of information that was missing in the film that could have been made better if they had that information to begin with and then otherwise the other nitpicky part of the film parts of the film or the other parts of the film that i had a problem with they're kind of nitpicky in that at some randomly when like hell the helicopters are on the planes are on and other um high noise um air vehicles are on um most of the time they spend time yelling at each other which to me is how can they hear each other over the yelling and then notably at the um in the towards the beginning of the film or in the first half of the film when they're uh, working when uh, natasha and her um stepsister are, or half sister or whatever are working on getting their foster dad out of prison they make a special point in that 
uh, playing thing to put on their headsets and then that was the only time that they really brought it up so my biggest thing was how can they really hear each other over all the noise and especially in that prison break sequence Natasha's yelling at her sister to for the escape and things to do and then all of a sudden there's an avalanche and then she's especially yelling it's like you're not gonna to me just felt disjointed that and it took me out of it that how are we gonna like is she gonna suddenly yell even louder and be able to yell into the plane so that was all kind of weird and I really didn't like that part of it but all of that aside like I said it goes back to we I to me that we needed more of the um Budapest mission and to me if they had maybe even connected that with um Natasha's escape or the I guess it was a weird way for the reason Natasha wanted to get or I guess that was her mission of getting out because if she killed off that guy who trained her then that would have been her escape um so I don't know it just felt a little all over the place it was not really handholdy so for me that all would have worked like I said if they had Hawkeye in the film if they had shown the mission set up if they had shown the planning and all of that going into it if they had a, if they had I guess they were trying to make it like um um not necessarily not Captain America Civil War but um if they they're, I guess they were trying to make it kind of like um Captain America Winter Soldier but with l even less of that spy stuff so I think to me they needed to make more they need to lean more into it to show off more of this side of um, Natasha the whole foster parent thing the whole, whole um, Russian spy agency thing and all of that to make it work better the whole family thing was fine I like the whole theme of it and I don't think I would change any of that that all worked fine but we just needed more of that Budapest mission and to show us more of that so going into the film I was gonna I was thinking that um, if we learn about the whole Budapest mission then I'd be okay with the film and it would be a good film in my opinion and to me that kind of redeemed it in a little bit because we now learn why or how Natasha and Hawkeye see Budapest differently but and I'm gonna have to go back and um, watch that scene to see which way they were leaning as far as who liked Budapest and who didn't but I kind of wanted I just wanted more of that mission to make the film better and to leave everything as is um, if we had more of the whole Budapest mission then um, it would have been a good film in my opinion but because of COVID or accounting for COVID, um, if they don't, um, if they let, if they kept, if you keep everything in the film as is, for me, the other way to fix the film, um, to leave it, if you, or especially by releasing it now after uh, WandaVision and Falcon and the Winter Soldier, the post credit scene that we have with Lu Julia Louis Dreyfus, the same, or whatever her character was at the end of, or in falcon and the winter soldier i kind of wanted or got to thinking that the film would have worked out a little bit better if they had natasha's sister showing up at her grave at the beginning of the film kind of like saving private ryan with private ryan showing up at the grave and then the movie being a flashback to everything that happened um post um captain america civil war and the whole thing with general i think general ross and um, helping their dad escape and reuniting with their mom who turned out to be a double agent or a triple agent I guess because she was working for the guy but then wanted to overtake him and reunite the family and all of that stuff so that all was good uh, the ending was good with um, the bad guy's daughter and using the serum to save the all the other black widows and have them go into hiding and do what they need to do and all of that would have worked and then as part of either a mid credit scene or a post credit scene pan or continue the scene from the beginning of the film with natasha's daughter and have julia louis dreyfus blow her nose and um, pan over to show us who she is and do the whole whistling thing and then the, the, the communication that um, Julia Louis Dreyfus is recruiting Natasha's sister to go after um, Hawkeye for killing Natasha um, and having Julia Louis Dreyfus use Natasha's sister to her own ends. So for me, that kind of felt like a lost opportunity to me and it kind of would have worked better as a split thing. 
And alternatively, and the other thing for me as well is that this scene could have also worked better as a post credit scene in Falcon and the Winter Soldier or because um, the bad guy's daughter in Black Widow was very reminiscent of US agent in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. The scene at the end with her, with Julia Louis-Dreyfus um, ta- recruiting U.S. agent um, would have also worked in this scene where we either have two scenes with her, which w- on the surface level would have would feel um, superfluous and duplicate, I guess, but have a um, mid credit scene with her, with Julia Louis-Dreyfus and Natasha's sister to send her after um hawkeye and then have a post credit scene where she's recruiting uh, where julia louis dreyfus is recruiting or setting up u.s agents so that i think all that kind of would have worked a little bit better to set all of that up and have that and kind of have more of that set up as far as phase four goes so this so black widow kind of feels like a mcu phase 3.5 it's supposed to be the end or it feels like the ending for phase three and kind of setting up phase four with julia louis dreyfus's character the end of black widow and showing that she's gone but having natasha's sister and the rest of the black widow program so potentially having um natasha's sister set up a black widow program where they have their own control and a set of black widow assassins i guess which potentially could be brought into avengers or them doing their own thing but overall all, all of that just basically in general all of it feel felt okay of a film so granted this while the film was set, supposed to be released um a year ago um it still felt like it should have been released a lot sooner so it should have um released it feels like a, a lot closer to um Avengers Endgame um, maybe a little bit after so Avengers Endgame came out in uh, 2019 so I'm gonna pull up the exact date so I guess 2020 felt about right so I guess for me maybe having this release prior to um, Falcon and the Winter Soldier but after WandaVision would have worked out a little bit better I guess Um, so Endgame released April 26th of 2019, so this actually, so Black Widow feels like it would have worked out better be having released in maybe December of 2019. Um, so I guess March of 2020, or right around March, or Q, sometime in Q1 makes sense for the release and COVID messed that up. So I guess it should have, to me, in my humble opinion as a, as a random podcaster, this feels like it'll work, it would have worked better as a release between WandaVision and um, Falcon and the Winter Soldier just because with WandaVision we know that um, Wanda is grieving with her loss of um, um, uh, what's his name Uh, Vision and then even potentially having the post credit scene from Black Widow at the end of uh, WandaVision, while it would feel random and unrelated, it would have set up having the Black Widow film and then sh- have then release Black Widow and then have Julia Louis-Dreyfus show up with U.S. Agent as a teaser f- or as a lead-in to Falcon and the Winter Soldier, then release that series. And it would have worked out a little bit better, in my opinion. Just, so just it just feels like the ordering feels a little bit messed up. And while part of it can partly be attributed to COVID, I think the scheduling could have been moved around a little bit to set that up a little bit better, especially with a release on Disney Plus and in the theaters. So, granted, you don't, I, I can see why they don't want to have Black Widow release at the same time as Wolf Falcon and the Winter Soldier, but I think the release dates could have been swapped and the post credit scenes could have been adjusted a little bit to, to account for all that because I'm sure it's just a matter of it. To me, in my opinion, it's just, it feels like it's just a matter of editing to fix all of that stuff. So if I was to grade, or so with that, let's get to the grading of Black Widow. So um, in my opinion, Black Widow... I'd probably give it a grade of about an 80 percent um, just because of the things I said there's not enough Budapest but with an adjustment of the post credit scene um, and a little bit better connection with Falcon and the Winter Soldier it could have been a little bit better so 
and so for me that's kind of where it lands and then little things stand out like the whole helicopter noise scene which is a minuscule part of it the helicarrier thing was cool so that was an upside the whole connection to family and that setup was good and all that so overall in general it was a good film but the for but for me like with um solo and rogue one in the star wars universe they didn't quite go as far as they could have and it feels like it's a matter of an extra few minutes of film to add to it to correct that sort of thing so for me the film takes it a lot of the way there but not quite far enough so like I said for me an expanded scene in Budapest which I guess we'll see if there's a deleted scene in the film later to account for that but for me, an expanded Budapest scene and having Hawkeye in the film uh, Jer with Jeremy Renner would have wor worked a lot better. It, it just like by the time you get there, you feel that something's missing. There is very little attribution or acknowledgement of his character until you get to the post-credit scene. So um, that's kind of why it falls into that whole B minus C plus range or right at the 80% range. And if you look on Rotten Tomatoes, that does have an 80% score with the critics. And and a 92% score with the audience. So generally, and like I said, it's not. It wasn't a bad film, but it could have been um, considerably better, or not considerably, but it could have been a lot better if they had Jeremy Renner in the film and more of the setup in Budapest, just to have that a uh, better connection of um, showing us rather than telling us. So that's all there is for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback of your own, things I missed, Easter eggs that I missed that you found interesting and things like that, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website is HeadphonesNeal.Reviews for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. But that's all there is for this particular episode. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time...